So after that demonstration, here we go. Parallelograms. <clears throat> so you have to remember, first of all, well, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to keep track of all of these things, all these ways that you know that it's a parallelogram, or if you know it's a parallelogram, all this stuff that you can always assume. Okay, so this is what you want in your notes for for the test. Um, so a parallelogram is a quadrilateral where both pairs of opposite sides are parallel to one another. Now let me point out that's different than a trapezoid. First of all, a trapezoid is a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. So a trapezoid would look something like this and it would have one pair of parallel sides. Okay, A parallelogram has two pairs of parallel sides. See the difference? Everyone shake your head a little bit. Okay, Parallelogram, two pairs of parallel sides, trapezoid exactly, and it always says with a trapezoid, exactly one pair of parallel sides. Okay? All right, so if it's a parallelogram, so it's a quadrilateral with both pairs of opposite sides parallel. Um, what else can we know about it for sure? Well, I want to propose that <clears throat> I think we can show that the opposite sides are the same length, are congruent. What do you think? Possible? Possible? Okay. So let's let's draw a diagonal here. Sometimes we call this an auxiliary segment that helps us with our proof. So this we'll draw in this auxiliary segment. Um, Check out those two triangles. Are they congruent? Do they look congruent? Yeah. Okay. Do you know for sure they are? Well, you're trying though. You're doing. You're you're doing. I think we got a side. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we got a side, don't we? Okay, so they share this side in common for sure. So um, that's something. Uh, do we have any angles? Okay, so I want you to look at, <clears throat> and I kind of have it on the side a little bit, but look at these two parallel lines. And let's look at this transversal here. And I want you to pay close attention to this angle here and this angle right here. So we have two parallel lines cut by a transversal. What's the relationship between these two? Alternate, alternate interior angles. And what do we know about alternate interior angles? They're congruent. Okay, so now we got an angle and a side, right? Okay, well, that's... That's something, isn't it? Okay. Um, now, okay. Well, let's look at the other one. Now we've got these two. So I'll extend those out so you can see them a little bit better. And this one as a transversal. What do you think about? this little angle there and that little angle right there. What are they again? Alternate interior angles again, right? Okay, so they're congruent. Man, we're making some progress, aren't we? Okay, well, do we need to make any more progress or we kind of got this thing licked? 
Yeah, we got angle side angle. We have angle side angle for those two triangles, don't we? Okay. And so, if these two triangles are congruent by angle side angle, what do we know about all of their corresponding angles? Yeah. So, this angle up here has got to be congruent to that angle there because they're corresponding parts of congruent triangles, aren't they? So, these alternate interior, well, not alternate, the, the opposite or angles in here, they're congruent. And if I drew the diagonal the other direction, could I prove that these angles are congruent? Okay. So, the opposite angles theorem says that the opposite angles in a parallelogram are always congruent. And not only that, but gosh, this side right here and this side right here, aren't they corresponding parts of congruent triangles? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And these two sides, are they corresponding parts of congruent triangles? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that is the parallel opposite sides theorem. So now, when we look at a parallelogram, <coughs> Okay, so we're told this is a parallelogram. So what does that mean? It means both pairs of opposite sides are parallel to one another. Right? And what else does it mean now? The opposite angles are congruent. I think I heard someone mumble that. And... The opposite sides are congruent. That's a lot of stuff to know, isn't it? Okay. So, um, let's look over on page 369 for a minute. Here's an example of what you might be asked to do today. So, with the given information there, is that a parallelogram? Are the red marks on that thing enough? Mm -hmm. They are, aren't they? Okay, so um, what's the deal with angle Y? Cheyenne, what's the deal with angle Y? It's 65 degrees. That's right. Yeah. What's the deal with the uh, X plus 4, Easton? It's equal to 12. That's it. That's it. That's all there is to it. You just have to remember that stuff. Let's look down a little ways. Number one. See right where it says monitoring progress? Okay. Uh, Will, what is the deal with GF? Say it louder. It's congruent to HE. That's right. So it's eight. Yeah, it's congruent to HE. Okay, uh, Kimball, what's the deal with angle G? Angle there you go. Sixty degrees, then, isn't it? Okay. Let's look over a little ways to number two. Uh, everybody, look at the two X and the fifty. Brooklyn, what's the deal with the two X and the fifty? They're congruent. Yeah, 2x equals 50. Aaliyah, what's the deal with the 18 and the y plus 3? There you go. You can make an equation. You can make that happen. Okay? Um, now, I have drawn more parallelograms for you because there's more stuff to talk about. Um, we've shown that the opposite angles are congruent in a parallelogram. Okay. Um, I also want to show you that the consecutive angles, any two consecutive angles, so let me label this thing, Q, R, S, P. So if I take any two consecutive angles, like P and Q, what do you think about the measure of those two angles? Mason, say, did you say something? Say it louder. 
They're supplementary. Are you all sure that they're supplementary or do they just look supplementary? Yeah, because they're consecutive. Ow, see that's an easy one, isn't it? Yeah, we've got we've got the two parallel lines and they're cut by this transversal and these are consecutive interior angles aren't they what, what about these two are they consecutive interior angles they are uh, how about these two how about these two okay so any two consecutive angles in our parallelogram they're going to be supplementary aren't they that's pretty that was pretty straightforward wasn't it good thing you guys know about parallel lines and transversals okay now here's the good the good I'm going to draw in both diagonals. I'm sure you guys can see it, some relationships going on here, can't you? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. But the real deal with the diagonals is that they bisect each other. Can you see it? Let me label it again. Uh, Q, R, S, P. We'll just call this M. Since it's the midpoint of both of the diagonals. Diagonals are not the same length, are they? No. Okay. But they actually bisect each other. like that. Now that's what we're trying to prove. We don't know that yet. Maybe I got, maybe I jumped the gun drawing those lines in, drawing, drawing that in. Here. Keep that in mind what we're trying to prove. Let me draw <coughs> this in again. How in the heck can we prove that the diagonals bisect each other? This is the part where we have long, uncomfortable silences and I make you say stuff. How can we show that QM and SM are the same length? How can we show that PM and RM are the same length? Say it loud, Logan. Ooh. So, can you prove triangles are so these two triangles are congruent and they are corresponding parts of congruent triangles. Mm -hmm. Can you guys prove that these two triangles are congruent? Well, you can prove that their angles and uh, sides are congruent and with the uh, angles parallel opposite sides. Okay, so these two these two sides. Now we're talking about this triangle and this triangle. We could do it with the other two as well. So we know uh, QP and RS. RS or SR, I guess we should say. We know those two are the same length, right? Mm -hmm. Opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. That's a theorem. That's a thing. Um, <coughs> so we know angle QPR and angle um, Q QPR, that one? Yeah, and PRS. Are this one? Yeah. Okay, those are. Yeah, alternate interior angles. Okay, and it seems like I'm going to need one more thing. What's the other thing we got? Ansley, what do you see? These two? Yeah. Okay. Ansley's going for that one right there and that one right there are alternate interior angles. Agreed? Yeah. Anybody see something different that we could do? Yeah. Okay, so these vertical angles, are they congruent? Yeah. Okay. Is angle angle side a thing? It is, isn't it? Okay. And is angle side angle a thing? Okay, so these two triangles are congruent 
by, we could either do angle, angle, side, or angle, side, angle. We could do it either way, couldn't we? Well, you can't prove they're congruent by angle, angle, angle. Because they could, you can have two triangles. You Now, I'm not saying you can't get angle, angle, angle. What I'm saying is that I can have two triangles like this um, where they share this angle in common these two are corresponding angles right these two are also corresponding angles so this little triangle see the little guy and the big one they have angle 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 in common but are they congruent no they're similar so angle 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 is similar okay but you know when you got angle angle side you also have angle angle side angle because if you've got two angles don't we have three so if we've got angle side angle we've got angle side angle angle don't we we got all the if you got two angles you got all three okay so now uh, this one and this one are they corresponding parts of congruent triangles Yes, sir. good yeah and these two here so what do the diagonals of a parallelogram do? Yeah, they bisect each other. Yeah, exactly. Oh, man, we've got five things so far that we've got to remember. <clears throat> okay, we've got the basic definition of a parallelogram, which is, that is, it's a quadrilateral and its opposite sides are parallel. So we always know in a parallelogram the opposite sides are parallel. We always know in every single parallelogram what do we know about the opposite angles? They're congruent, okay. Um, In a parallel, if it's a parallelogram, what do we know about the opposite sides? They're congruent. And if it's a parallelogram, let's see, we got the opposite sides are parallel, the opposite angles are congruent, the opposite sides are uh, congruent. Um, oh, yeah consecutive angles what do we know about the any two consecutive angles supplementary. supplementary and then we have the last one that we just did where we proved that the diagonals bisect each other. Yes? Can you also prove that the diagonals bisect each other by using construction? Possibly. Using construction. Well, I, I suppose we could construct them so that they do. Is that what you mean? seems logical but I don't know how exactly we would do that but I can think about it and we can talk about it on Monday cool all right good um, uh, why do we care we don't. <laughs> I know you don't uh, <clears throat> well let's go with let's go with a car can we go with a car for a minute um, on a car, you have something called a rack and pinion steering. All right, so it's kind of important that your tires face the same direction all the time. Right? Yeah. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna just tell you these are not the tires of the car. 
they're not even the wheels of the car. Let's say these are the spindles that the wheel hooks to. You ever, you ever take a, the wheel off and you're changing a tire? And there's that spindle, right, sitting right there, and it's connected, and it's connected like this. This part can slide over the top of this section. So this part goes in, can go in. This part is a, is a hydraulic ram, has a hydraulic ram on it, and it can push this out and suck it back in. Okay, go both directions. So what happens when this ram makes this get longer? This part, what's going to happen over here? Yeah, it's going to do the exact same thing. What would happen if it did not do the exact same thing? Yeah, you wouldn't be driving very long, would you? Okay. That's kind of an important part of our car, isn't it? Uh, every single car, every, man, even old, old cars. Even my old go-kart that we built that had rope tied to the end of the axles and stuff. Same idea, okay? Same idea. Kind of an important deal. Uh, let's look at page one, uh, sorry, 370 for a minute. There's a lamp there. You see the lamp? Anybody have a lamp like that? Or have you seen one of those like that? Raise your hand if you've seen one of those like that. Ever played with one? And you can extend it out and move it around, right? Okay. So it's got, we're, we're just looking at this top section up here. A, B, C, D. We've highlighted that part right there. So when you want that lamp to extend out or whatever, if we, if we change this angle, we can change this, we can change that, and we can still keep it all connected, can't we? We can change the shape of that quadrilateral without changing the length of one of its sides. Now, can that happen in a triangle? No. What would happen if I put a brace from here down to the right there? Could I change the shape anymore? No, we couldn't. But it's important to remember that if it's a quadrilateral, that we can change its shape without changing the length of one of its sides. Okay? Um, oh... We better talk about coordinate plane stuff. Look at page uh, 371. There we see a parallelogram right at the top of the page. We see a parallelogram in a coordinate plane. L, M, N, O. <clears throat> Take a look at O, L, and N, M. How do you get from O to L? Okay, can I go up four and over one? Kind of like slope, like rise over run. Is that okay? What about from N to M? Up four over one. So if they're both up four over one, is the distance between them, is one squared plus four squared going to equal both of them, isn't it? Okay. So we can actually show that they're the same length, can't we? And since they have the same slope, are they parallel? Yeah. Yoast, are they parallel if they have the same slope? Yeah. Um, Brisian, look at L, M, and O, N. Are they parallel? Yeah, they both have a slope of? What's their slopes? Zero. Yeah, zero, Creek says. Good job.
Okay. Um, in the coordinate plane, using a parallelogram is quite a bit easier. See, because we have some other tools, not just construction and things like that. Now, this brings me back to what you were saying, Lizzie, about the construction thing. See, I think I can do this in a coordinate plane. See, because what, what do we have in a coordinate plane? Well, we have the distance formula, Pythagorean theorem, right? We got midpoint, yeah? We got midpoint formula. We got slopes. We can look at the slopes and see if they're parallel. We got all kinds of stuff, don't we? Yeah, we have more tools when we look at it in a coordinate plane. Okay, I know it's Friday and you guys are like, just give us the assignment, Mr. Collard, and stop talking. So, here we go. Chapter 7.2. Should be able to get that done today in class. It's kind of interesting. Good luck. <laughs>